Hello and welcome to another pen video for me, Penultimate Dave. So today I thought I would actually uh, show you, um, we had our, our latest uh, London UK Fountain Pen uh, Club meet and uh, this was uh, May the 5th, uh, 2018. And uh, I thought I'd show you just a number of the pens that uh, that I, I actually brought with me to to the uh, pen club meetup, uh, and, and also just show you some pictures that I took at the pen club meetup for anyone that that didn't attend or or, or maybe that that's international and just physically cannot attend uh, one of our pen club meets. So um, we we meet up at a place called uh, Beer Schenke, um which is uh, in um, London, in in East Central. And uh, we, we meet up there once a month. It's always the first Saturday of the month. Um, there's only one uh, exclusion to that, and that is when we have the uh, LWES, or the, the London uh, um, Writing Equipment Show, which is uh, in uh, early October, in which case the pen club will actually meet up there instead. Um, but uh, normally uh, every month we meet up at Beer Schenke, and uh, it's a uh, German beer hall. Uh, so they have some very nice uh, German beer on tap. Uh, also have some really nice food. Um, they they make a, a really lovely curry verst, and uh, that that's a uh, German sausage. Uh, I think it's a steamed sausage and then fried. Uh, it comes with a curry sauce uh, with some paprika over it with with chips, and it's a really really nice uh, uh, meal. Um, it's 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 not a heavy meal as well because we, we meet around midday, um, but uh, I. I typically have a, a pint of uh, or a stein uh, of, of uh, lager shandy um, I don't want to be too <laughs> wasted at midday um, but uh, yeah it, it's it's a really nice place uh, the, the club tends to have around about uh, normally around about 20 people will, will attend on average some months we, we can go up to about 30 um, and uh, this month was a little bit lighter we had around a dozen people um, attend but uh, I actually found it was actually less busy less hectic uh, this month uh, and, and it actually gave uh, me some more quality time to sit down and, and talk to, uh, to, to some of my pen friends uh, and, uh, and really sort of like try out some new pens more uh, and let them try my pen so it was a little bit less hectic uh, uh, which for me is good actually um, I, I do like the the lar equally the, the larger attendances where, where we have 20 to 30 people but but uh, I, I think this time it just allowed me just to sort of network more with people and um, it was it was very good turn out turn out and uh, so here really um, is is a, a few of the uh, pens that I took. <laughs> I'll I'll say a few uh, lightly. Um, I took <clears throat> was it about thirty pens with me, and um, th that for me is actually quite light, to be honest, because uh, normally I would take a lot more pens. Uh, like sometimes I can take forty. I think I think at one point I took nearly fifty pens to, to one of the club meets. So um, that that I, I find really forty fifty is a bit too many pens to take, especially uh, seeing that most of them need to be inked up as well. But uh, so so here were some of the pens that I took. So this was a a, a lovely uh, Visconti uh, watermark in sterling silver. Um, this is always a, a very sort of uh, um, inviting pen that people like the look of. Um, so, so that there was that pen that I took with me. Um, also, uh, this pen, which is the Opera Master Golden Dust, um, and uh, you can see the the reason why it's called Golden Dust is because of the the the, the lovely gold that, that you see there in in the body of the material. So uh, you can just see it glistening there. So um, that's a, a lovely a lovely Opera Master. Also have the Opera Master River Thames, uh, and uh, people love to write with that. Um, so the the Golden Dust, well, the, the watermark comes with a medium nib. The Golden Dust, I have a springy or bouncy fine nib on. Uh, this has a uh, 1.3 millimeter stub nib from Visconti on it, on the River Thames. 
the Luna, uh, which is a Goulet Pens exclusive. Uh, this is the Opera Master Luna. This has a 1.3 millimeter stub as well. Um, and uh, it's really, really wet, wet nib. I have the uh, Visconti Camelot, which I've shown this on a number of videos before, but you can just see it's actually made of chainmail. And that chainmail is exquisite and um, will definitely falls into one of my favorite pen categories uh, easily. Um, it's such a stunning, stunning pen. And uh, that actually uh, it comes with a medium nib. Um, I have that inked up with, uh, uh, I think, um, Mont Blanc Lavender Purple at the moment. I, I did have Oyster Grey in there. Mont Blanc Oyster Grey before. Uh, there's the Visconti Belgica, and this is always a, a stunning pen that people like like to play with. Very wet, um, very, very juicy wet nib. Uh, this is a double board. Um, well, it's a um, board nib, but uh, it writes like a double board. And then I have the... Visconti Ecstasy de Oud, and uh, that's that's a lovely pen as well. Uh, has has this overlay, um, Vermeil overlay, and uh, it's just a stunning, stunning pen in my collection. And I like this. It's a it's a it's a medium nib, but it's it's very very juicy wet nib. Um, doesn't have a huge ink capacity either, so it does go through ink pretty quickly. And I have a demonstrator, which is the uh, Visconti Homo Sapiens London Fog, and that is uh, permanently inked up at the moment with um, uh, Diamine Earl Grey. Uh, at one point, I used to ink this up purely with um, Pilot of Off Shizuku Compeki, um, but uh, now it's uh, Diamine Earl Grey. It's one of my favourite inks, so that's inked up with that. Uh, a number of people also got to try my Visconti Medici. Um, and uh, this one actually has a very, if you can see it here, very exquisite sort of like wood grain effect here on on that that body. Um, and uh, maybe if we can zoom in a little bit more, you may see that it's um, there. You go. It's it's a lovely, lovely effect. Um, and this actually has a double board nib in there. Uh, it's inked up with uh, um, Akamon uh, SBRE Brown. Um, which is a brown ink, Stephen Brown's ink. And then I have uh, this uh, Visconti um, Opera Silver Dust. And you can see here the the material, um, it's, it's a silver dust uh, in the resin uh, with, with sil really with swirls here. And you can just see how that swirls around. And it's uh, inked up at the moment and you can see when the, when the ink's in there actually and the light catches it it's even better so um that's uh it's not an opera master but it's just a regular opera uh, that has a palladium nib this comes in two two different nibs uh it comes with the cr18 which is uh the chromium 18 nib from visconti uh, that's a cheaper version of this pen and uh, this one actually has the 23 cap palladium nib so i took that that is a very very juicy wet writer um, and then I'll move that out of the way and I'll bring in this tray as well so this tray this was the next 10 pens that I took with me so this is the Visconti Caput Mundi uh, it's a Homo Sapiens because you've got the two rings here uh, and, and this is in the the bronze trim um, it did come with a silver trim and a I believe a ruthenium trim um, they were the US exclusives from Chatterley Luxury uh, this was the European exclusive or the Italian exclusive uh, I got this from uh, Stefano at uh, Stilograph Corsani and uh, it's a really really nice pen uh, recently I I picked up um, the Visconti Jade because I, I really wanted uh, I mean to go with it but because uh, uh, these are not like full demonstrators they're more like opaque uh, demonstrators I wanted the jade to go with it and the, the jade has the um, the the my pens jewel there it's a jade gemstone um, and uh, that that's a really nice nib uh, that's a medium nib you can just see with the ink slushing around so it's not a full demonstrator but you can see the ink uh, well enough um, 
so that's a, a nice pen. Uh, I have the uh, Visconti Wall Street, and then this is the limited edition version, uh, and uh, this has the stacked celluloid, so I took that with me as well. Um, that's, that has a 1.3 juicy wet stub nib in it um, from Visconti, and it's it's a beautiful, beautiful writer. Uh, I took a, a new acquisition, which was the the Visconti Luxor, and uh, I've done an unboxing and review video of this. But this pen is just absolutely stunning. Um, it's uh, with all these Egyptian uh, hieroglyphs on. It's just amazing, really. That uh, it's it's, it's a stunning, stunning pen. Uh, and this is a medium nib. I have this uh, inked up with Compeki at the moment, uh, really to match the, the blue uh, hieroglyphs. And uh, that's a really nice pen. So I had a lot of people uh, writing with that uh, and really liking it um, at the pen club. Uh, I have my uh, Visconti Ducali Palazzo. Um, and this is a, a really lovely demonstrator. I've shown this off, I've done an unboxing and, and a review of this before, but uh, you, you can see, that you, literally, you have the the palace um, etched into the barrel here. It's, it's an amazing, amazing... Um, I'm just going to bring a little bit more light, as you can see. It's, it's an amazing pen, and it really just shines, this, this yellow dawn material. Uh, I have a, an orange ink uh, inked up in there at the moment. And then I have the um, Voyager, the Visconti Voyager, uh, and then this is the Kaleido uh, Honey Almond. And this is, uh, again, a really nice pattern that you can see here. Uh, it's not a demonstrator, it's a cartridge converter, um, but uh, I do like this. And uh, I think I, I have it uh, inked up at the moment with uh, Robert Oster, uh, I think Orange Zest at the moment. So, uh, as you see, it's a cartridge converter, but um, it's it's a really, really nice pen. Uh has a medium nib on, uh, and this is a... Let's see if I'm going to focus on this. Actually, it's a fine nib. I think I may have, may have actually swapped the nib out on that one. But um, it's, a, it's, it's a gold nib. Uh, really, really nice. Um, but it's a very juicy wet nib. Um, I do actually swap my nibs around, so so sometimes I, I do forget what nibs I do have in which pens. Um, I also recently picked up the Pelican, um, and this is the uh, M600 uh, Turquoise White, and uh, it's, it's a lovely pen. I've done an unboxing uh, video of this. I took this to the pen club. It's currently inked up with uh, Lamy Turquoise, which I really, really do love. So uh, that's that's a, a lovely pen as well. Uh, I also took a number of my other Pelicans as well, which is the M800 Renaissance Brown. Uh, I just love this like cracked ice effect. Um, still a stunning pen. Um, so all of my Pelicans have a broad nib in. Um, I I started off with the M800 Renaissance Brown in a medium nib. Didn't quite the, the medium nib was fine, but it wasn't to me. It didn't feel great and. Uh, I wanted something that was a little bit more wetter, a little bit more broader, and I, and I went for the broad, and and I've never turned back. And then I have the vibrant blue, which I acquired uh, I think the month before, and uh, this is an older uh, M800, but it's likewise it's it's a lovely, lovely, stunning, cracked ice material, semi-translucent as well. These are all piston fillers, the the M800s uh, and the M600 as well. And then you have the Ocean Swirl as well, and uh, some people do complain that it has a lot of black in the in the pen. But um, to be honest, I, I I like it, and it's not black; it's just dark areas, and uh, really just shows the ocean at its various depths and uh, and how the the sun shines on the ocean. So uh, this is a really really nice uh, nice uh, Ocean Swirl. So I had, I took that with me as well, and I'll show you the final tray of pens I took with me. And you you can see here I have a few more. Uh, I got uh, recently I picked up this M800 Grand Plus. Uh, I tend to call it the Grand Place, but uh, I know it's a Grand Plus, and 
Um, this is uh, stunning, stunning material, and uh, it's very brown. Has some greys, some blues in it. It's just lovely the way the, the light reflects off of this pen. Uh, so that's a lovely pen. Uh, I have my M800 Royal Gold Varden. Uh, that also is, is a favourite of mine. And um, again, uh, both of those pens have a broad nib in them. Um, uh, I had a lot of people play with my, uh, um, these always uh, popular pens, the classic pens uh, LM1 Flame Red. Uh, this has a Bock nib in, has a diffusion bonded acrylic, and uh, I do actually have a review that will be coming soon of this, uh, and the LB5, uh, but uh, it, it is, it's a stunning, stunning pen. Uh, so I, had, I took the LM1, uh, a number of people actually wrote with that, I had the Classic Pens LB5, which basically is a Sailor King of Pens nib, uh, a pen, and uh, you can see again here the diffusion bonded acrylic here is just it is amazing the way the light catches it and this actually uh this was made by sailor um for classic pens for lambrew pens and um this uh has a sailor nib on it uh, sailor king of pen nib it's actually five millimeters longer than a standard king of pen from sailor but uh, again that's a, a lovely lovely pen uh i also took um my Ojiva, which wasn't inked, but I inked up. I wanted to show off the uh, Visconti uh, Travelling Inkwell, uh, and I was showing that to Rupert uh, that was at the club, and um, showing how to fill um, uh, on the go, and uh, didn't make a mess, <laughs> which was good. Uh, this is a cartridge converter. It's a, so this is the ASG um, Ojiva uh, Arco Celluloid, uh, and it's, it's a lovely, lovely... Um, material um originally come from omas uh, this this pen actually does have an omas nib on it as well so uh um even though it's an asc pen it has a lovely frosted nib on it so uh, i do like this this uh, pen uh, and again it, it's it's one that i do like in my collection um there were a couple of new pens and uh, i will have some unboxing and review videos of these very shortly. These are Atelier Lusso pens um, from Eric Sands, and and these are uh, amazing pens. Uh, this is the uh, Carina, um, and uh, these are cartridge converter pens. Um, nothing wrong with cartridge converter. I actually do like cartridge converter, but you can see here the material. If I zoom in a little bit, it starts off with a white. Um, and it goes into these lovely ink swirls. Uh, it, it's very much like when you um, go to clean out a pen and you dip it into uh, a clean glass of water and you just swirl the, the nib around in it and you just get these like like patterns, uh, ink sort of swirling out patterns. And um, it's, it's such a stunning pen. And uh, when I saw this, uh, that Eric had created this pen, I just I loved it and uh, I I thought I well, I need to I need to talk to Eric see if I can get this pen. So there's that pen. Uh, there's also this uh, Andromeda that he uh, made as well. Stunning sort of it's almost like a like a um, looking at the Earth from space. Um, it's a stunning material. You can just see here. So so these were uh, actually two two pens from Eric that literally came in the day before the pen club. And uh, I decided I really I had to take these. But I've got an unboxing video that uh, will be up shortly of these. So you'll be able to see these in full there. Uh, I also, uh, I don't know, lately uh, I bought a, a few um, Lamy's. Uh, I had uh, for some time a Lamy All Star uh, purple one. And um, I bought um, recently a, um, a Lamy Lux. Not recently, probably about. It's probably about four or five months ago, maybe, and uh, put a, a 1.9 millimeter stub in that, and uh, I got. Uh, I decided to get the all black, and um, I like. I like the the all blackness of this pen. Not not only uh, the the um, material is a lot more blacker than the original black or the uh, I think it was the charcoal version. Uh, it has a black clip on, and uh, it has a a, a lovely. Uh, black nib. Um, I got a um, broad nib on this one because I do like broad nibs. 
so uh, it's uh, it's a lovely lovely broad nib um, uh, so I decided to take that along with me because um, I, I, know, I know there's a lot of people that do have Lamy's at, at the uh, pen club so I thought well that, that could be interesting uh, I also took a, a couple of uh, rollables with me uh, just so that people could try and uh, so these are um, I'll, I'll show you this one first I'll go in reverse order. This is the Ashford from Visconti, um, and uh, it's it's a, a it's a lovely sort of grey uh, chatoyance uh, in the pen, but it is a rollable. It's not a fountain pen, um, and uh, I'll show you here. It has a very sort of almost rounded sort of bulbous type uh, section to it. Um, but uh, it's let's see if we can get a focus. There you go. Um, but uh, it, it is a it's, it's a nice comfortable pen. Um, I actually do find it it sort of in the hand. It, it's very nice. It's it actually puts out a very wet, uh, juicy 0.7 millimeter line, uh, and it's rather nice. And uh, so. I don't use rollables a lot, but um, sometimes if you need to sign a document, fountain pens aren't always the, the best pens, especially a stub nib. So uh, I tend to normally carry one or two rollables with me. And then there was this one that I picked up uh, a year ago, and, and this is the um, uh, the Queen's Jubilee uh, Visconti. Um, and uh, this is a stunning pen. Uh, this has um, it's, it's almost like a ruby red, but it's, it's almost a bit like a galaxy, uh, and you have this gold dust in within the material. It's just a, a lovely, lovely pen, and uh, uh, this has a slightly different section. This is a pull, pull, push, but um, it's a. Uh, uh, more of a metal section, more of a pointed one, but uh, again, it, the the weight, uh, it's a again a juicy 0.7 millimeter uh, refill. Um, it puts down a very wet line, um, not as wet as a fountain pen, obviously, but uh, so much more luxurious than a ballpoint. So uh, I tend to carry that with me sometimes as well if I if I think I might need to sign something. Um, Ideally, if you're signing something and you don't know the quality of the paper, then then maybe a um, uh, a ballpoint is sometimes better. But uh, uh, I I tend to really loathe ballpoints. I've never never had a ballpoint that writes well, and uh, so I tend to to carry those with me. So that was the um, thirty pens that I took, uh, and then I got to sample some other pens as well. So. Uh, I, I, I took some photos that I'll show you here, and these are like um, uh, Gary um, Dapperman bought the um, his uh, blue Ojiva cocktail. So uh, I, I took a, a photo of that, and uh, alongside my um, uh, Arco uh, Ojiva, and uh, it's it's a nice pen. It has a very juicy sort of wet um uh like zoom nib um on on the uh, pen um and uh if i'll take a photo of that i've written with that before uh, i've not actually um uh, i didn't write with it. it wasn't inked up this time around but the nib it has a lovely omas nib on it uh that you can probably see there um and uh it, it's just 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 beautiful um uh, he also brought his uh scribo from uh um, from right here now, um, and uh, this is a um, limited edition special um, that John Hall got in for right here now, and uh, came with a number of different nibs. Uh, so these are actually made by um, uh, the some of the ex Omas staff. Uh, so I believe it was the sales director and some engineering staff that got together and created a company and uh, they've made this pen and it is a really nice pen it's um it is a very fle flexible or flexibile style nib uh it is rather nice to write with and i uh, although the material uh doesn't really do a lot for me in terms of how it looks i do like that nib and um I don't know. I, I'm torn whether or not to pick one up or not. Um, it, it is a nice pen, and I know Scribo have some other pens that will be coming out soon as well. So, so um, that that will be interesting. But this nib, it's a 14 carat 
nib and it is it is lovely um it's a fine nib uh i also got to try um rupert brought along uh his uh, Lamy dialogue uh three and uh um that's that was a really nice pen i i was quite surprised at that um it's very weighty um but uh it really really did feel good in the hand and it wrote very well um i i don't have any expensive or more expensive lamis other than the safaris and all stars but um uh it, uh the design probably isn't what i would normally go for in a pen um it, it's it's a rather sort of flat elongated um rounded uh pen um but but it did write really well and and that surprised me um i don't know why it surprised me because lamis do write well but um uh i, I did like it and uh so i'll have to um uh, have to watch your space on that one i do i do have a lot of pens to um that i have on my wish list so i can't get them all unfortunately um and I do rate them, so so I know which pen to buy next. Uh, and then there's a bit of a running joke. Um, so uh, Thomas um, uh, brought, um, he's a matcha, matcha macchiato uh, on Discord. He brought um, uh, his My You. And uh, uh, this has been a running joke because on, on a number of my videos I say that I do not have big hands and um i actually have rather small hands so he brought this very very small uh my you and um you really do need to post it and uh um and i'll show you here like my my hands are not that large like um for instance like this is fairly small rollable um uh, i think probably my um smallest pen probably is um i don't know let's see uh i have my smallest pen is probably the edison perlet now uh i find that is bordering on the size of, of of being small um not only in terms of thickness but in terms of size so so my hands aren't that big uh, if i if i show you here like this is the size of my my pen here um so it's not it's not a um uh a big pen uh, compared to like an edison collier which is a big pen and and that in itself is gonna really sort of like, my hands are not that large so it's a bit of a running joke um but uh uh, I got to try the try the uh, my you, and um, uh, that had uh, I I want to say it's an oblique, but uh, it may have been a um, cursive italic. Um, but uh, I, I found that a little bit scratchy. Uh, I found if I I tend to roll my nibs, so I tend to roll them uh, almost like clockwise or, or to the right more when I write. So putting more pressure on the right time than the left time. And uh, I found that rather scratchy, but if I wrote more on the left hind, it was actually less scratchy. Um, it, it was a fine nib, and I'm not really into fine nibs or, or extra fine nibs. So, um, uh, But it was certainly a, uh, an, an experience, a good one, that, that uh, it, it kind of makes me realise that sort of I really want to stick with the broader nibs. Probably not go much below a medium nib in a lot of pens. Um, I also got to to try the Franklin Christoph, um, and uh, this had a broad sig in. Um, this was from uh, Gary uh, Dapperman, uh, and uh, this was uh, a really nice, um, really nice nib. Um, very wet, very broad, very smooth, and um, I don't have any Franklin Christophs in my collection, and uh, so that may be actually a pen that I I need to 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 add in in the very near future um so yeah i uh if I, I think i must have tried probably about seven or eight franklin crystals at, at our london pen club from various people like mishka had a, a number as well and um uh, th they are all really nice writers and uh, especially the music nibs so uh, i think at some point i may have to buy some franklin christophs uh the problem i have is that whenever i go to look for a specific model it's always sold out it's it's never available um so 
I'll have to see. Um, and then there was, uh, so Thomas also brought uh, his uh, M6, I think it's an M620. Um, it's the uh, Grand Plus. Um, and I uh, wanted to take a photo of that alongside my M800 Grand Plus. And uh, uh, you can actually see the, the difference here, not only in terms of size, but it, it's a, more of a copper color, which actually, to be honest, I actually prefer. Um, I don't know why um, Pelican changed to more of a, a like a, a grayer type color for the M800, but that that copper color is really nice. Um, so that that again was a really nice pen. I don't normally like M600s, but I do have the M600 um, turquoise white, and I do like that. And actually, although I thought it was a little bit too small for me, it's actually not a bad pen. Um, uh, in terms of size and weight, so um, really do like that. Uh, Thomas also brought uh, uh, an Omas, a vintage Omas, that I tried, and that was, I was very surprised. It was a brown pen, um, and uh, it was a really, really nice writer. Um, I shouldn't be surprised. Omas nibs tend to be. Uh, I think it was a, uh, I think it was maybe a 14 carat nib. Um, but uh, it was it was really really nice, um, and here's a few more photos that that, that uh, we were taking, um, and uh, so Rupert is there on the left. We had another new joiner there on the right that that turned up, and um, <laughs> Rupert and I, as 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 we all do at pen clubs, we get our our phones out and we start taking photos photos of pens that, that each other has and that, um, and uh, I I always want to document the. Um, the pen club as much as I can so uh, <laughs> we were having a, a bit of a chuckle there uh, and then we we have a number of people we have uh, uh, seven Daniel here on on the right uh, seven Daniel on Instagram and reddit uh, and then uh, Marissa as well there uh, she organizes the the uh, pen club meet and uh, um, it, it was as I said it was a smaller um, setup of people um, but uh, it it was very useful um, I also got to try Rupert's Monte Grappa. Uh, this was the, uh, I believe, the Fortuna, uh, and that was a uh, quite a, a nice pen as well. So, uh, uh, and I, I did some writing samples as well. Um, yeah, Monte Grappa Fortuna. Uh, oh, I tried the uh, um, uh, Gary had a Fountain Pen Revolution uh, Himalaya, um, which. Uh, uh, I used to have um, a number of uh, FPR indices, and uh, I actually found that a lot better than the uh, Indus, so so that was good. Also tried a a, a Murex as well, um, and uh, yeah, it was it was a really good pen club meetup. Um, so you, know, you can see lots of people have uh, their pens uh, in in various cases, some zip cases, some some pen rolls. Um, and uh, you see a few of my cases there that I, I took with me as well. So uh, so that was really it for our pen club meet uh, this time around. Uh, if you're thinking about coming to the London Pen Club, uh, June would be a good month to come because we, we actually have um, uh, an ink manufacturer coming, um, which which could be good. And um, yeah, uh, um, uh, if, if you're either uh, in the area or, or want to come, uh, you can come to, to our Reddit page. Uh, and um uh, but just you can just turn up on the day if you want to um but uh if if you want to know at any point if i'm going i don't always go every month um but uh lately i have been and um uh, i will be going to the june pen club meet but uh um if if you ever want to turn up just just send me a message to see if i'm going to be there or not uh and uh, yeah, so so that's it really for for this uh um, pen club uh, meet video um, please uh, like comment subscribe and i'll see you on the next pen video thanks for watching bye bye <laughs>